What's up people? Good day, good morning, good evening. So today's daily verses are 2 Corinthians 6, 16 to 18, but I'm reading from the NLT, otherwise known as the New Living Translation, and it reads, And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourself from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you, and I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So what is these scriptures? What are they saying to you today? Like, think about it, ruminate it for one second. and then, uh, So it's basically telling us that as God's people, we've got to be separate from the world. And that doesn't mean we have to completely ignore everyone in the world, no. It just means we have to be set apart from the world, and that means acting and behaving in a certain way in which the world doesn't act and behave. Where the world thinks one thing, yeah, which is acceptable, where the world, where the world thinks one thing is good and one thing is evil, we should be set apart, why? Because we should follow the Bible as our example of what's good and evil, what is right and wrong, not what the world says for the world's examples of right and wrong and what the world calls good and evil, is fleeting and it drastically changes over time periods. So from when the gospel was first preached to now, what society calls wrong and good has completely changed. But one thing remains the same and, it's, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the same today, yesterday and tomorrow. And what remains same also is the word of God and the word says what is right. The word says what is wrong. And this is what we should follow. This should be the example we should look to follow and imitate is what the word says, not what the world says. So the world will have you going down a thing if you don't if you don't think a certain way, if you don't agree with a certain viewpoint, suddenly you're considered evil, you're considered like corrupted, you're considered, you know, you're considered lesser than because you don't believe in a certain point of view. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says we're sons and daughters of the living God, when we put him first, when we worship him, when we see him as our heavenly father, and we love him, we become his sons and daughters. When we have faith in Jesus Christ, we become his sons and daughters. We become combined with, with the Jewish people who believed in Christ, the new Israel. And that's an important thing to deep, you know. It says here, and what union can there be between God's people and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Because, because we are the temple of the living God, and because we are literally the temple, we have the Holy Spirit living within us. So when we become a new believer, we, the Holy Spirit becomes imparted on us, and our body becomes a temple. Therefore, we can't be partners with idols, because that would be dishonouring the temple, that would be dishonouring the Holy Spirit within us. We have to turn away from idol worship in, 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 in all of its forms. And that could any that doesn't have to be, you know, like a, a Krishna statue or a Buddha statue or a statue of death or the devil or anything. It could literally be whatever takes the place of, of God in our heart. Like you got a question, yeah? <clears throat> you know, what what takes the place of God in your heart? Is it money? Is it alcohol? Is it drugs? Is it women, men, whatever it may be? You need to cast that out. Why? Because what union can there be between God's temple and idols? There can be no union. Nothing can come above God and our relationship with Christ in our heart. Nothing. Otherwise, we become in union with idols. That's detestable to the Lord. It says, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. So as I say, we have the Holy Spirit. So God lives within each of us. <clears throat> and it says here, and walk among them. Because he will walk among us because he walks from within, within us. But also he walks beside us. When we go through life, he's, he's, it, Jesus said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And a yoke is, is a device that it basically ties two sort of oxen together by the neck. So they can both pull something together. And when he says his, his yoke is easy and his burden is light, it's because he's in our life. Jesus Christ is in our life. And he's, when, we, when we go through life, he's pulling with us and we're pulling as a team. <clears throat> we can't do it without him. But he helps give us the strength and the extra push to go through life. So when he says, I will live in them and walk among them, I will be their God and they will be my people. It means he's in us in the form of the Spirit and he's also beside us at the same time in the form of the Spirit. But, and he's also walking among us because we are the temple of, this, of the Holy Spirit. And he says, I will be their God and they will be my people. Because we are his people. We are believers of Christ. 
Therefore, we have sons and daughters of the Most High God and disciples of Christ, so we become his people. This is our inheritance for faith. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourself from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things and I'll welcome you. So we have to separate ourselves from unbelievers, from the ways of unbelievers. And that doesn't mean, you know, completely ignoring or completely like not going to hear or hear or hear unless it's Christian, no. It means being set apart from them and not touching the things they touch. Like, for example, I'm being asked, oh, do you want to come to the staff party for work? And they're like, oh, <clears throat> we're going to go to this restaurant and we're all going to get drunk and these kind of things. And that, that may sound good to some people, but it don't sound good to me. Why? Because it says, don't touch their filthy things and I'll welcome you. And also the Bible says, you know, to be sober-minded. And that's another reason not to drink in excess. So we remain sober-minded and vigilant, not only because the enemy prows, like, sorry, uh, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for whom to devour, but because, you know, God could come back at any time. We don't want to be seen, we don't want to be seen slacking, you know, drinking. Not about that life. <clears throat> but we should come out from among unbelievers and separate ourselves from them, setting ourselves apart because of our moral values we have in Jesus Christ. And that means acting, as as God would will us to act, not as the world acts. And that's sometimes a very difficult situation, but it's something the more you do, and the more you start to act as God wants you to act and what his will for our life is, the easier it is to say no to these people, I promise you. And don't touch their filthy things, it says. So don't touch the things they touch, the alcohol, the cigarettes, the drugs. <clears throat> You've got to move away from these things. Move away from all these addictions, you know. Move away from gambling, uh, from unsolicited uh, sex, all these kind of things that they do, you know. Things that they don't, you know, they don't think is evil, but it is. We've got to step away from these things and start stepping towards Jesus Christ, looking, stepping towards what he thinks is right for our lives, not what they do. Don't touch filthy things. And it says, and I will welcome you, and I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Because he looks for people that humble themselves before him. So when it says, and I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Because he looks to exalt people that humble themselves before his power and accept their power, sorry, his power over their lives. And then, then and when you believe in faith in Jesus Christ, then you, you become, your inheritance is your son, your son or daughter of the most high living God. And that will make all the difference. And then when you're a son and daughter of the most high living God, and you deep and understand the sacrifice Jesus Christ has done for you, there can be no union with idols. You have a spiritual conviction that you're going to stay away from idol worship, from putting things in God's, pla <coughs> God's place in your heart. Because when you're born again, you understand that there is nothing better than God. Therefore, he should always hold the first place in your heart, you know. So today as we go forward, let's, let's remove any union we have with idols and move towards Christ, centering our minds on Christ and becoming Christ-like in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day today. Peace. Thank God it's Sunday, I've had gun on my line That's just what the enemy do Big bro told me, pat my mind That's just what the fellowship do Free up all of my guys from sin That's only what Christ can do Enemy try hit me with a lie That's just what the enemy do But the enemy was born to lose We were born to conquer He made my feet like the feet of a deer That's why I got an ALS sponsor